vai ma e The special melody that I just sang is a very special Torah trope called a shalshalit. It appears only four times in the entire Torah, three times in Breshit, and it also appears in this week's portion, Vayeshev. So what's so special about the shalshalit, and what can it teach us about our own lives? First, I'd like to back up and talk about what is trope. Trope is a system of cantillation or singing every single word of the Torah and of all of the Haftarot and the Megillot. This is not an arbitrary system. This is not a suggested system. This is the system of singing every word of the Torah so that we can know how to correctly punctuate every sentence, every verse, so that we can know what part of the verse is to be emphasized and so that we know on any single word what syllable of that word is important. By singing the wrong trope, you can totally change the meaning of a verse. By singing the wrong syllable of a word, you can totally change the meaning of the word. Let me illustrate with an English example. A few years ago, there was a book that came out called Eats, Shoots, and Leaves. Now, we can read that as eats, shoots, and leaves. Or we can read that as eats, shoots, and leaves very different sentence, very different meaning. Trope would tell us how to correctly read that sentence. Or let's look at a word like record or record, which is spelled exactly the same way. The only way to know how to correctly pronounce it, whether the emphasis is on the first syllable or the second syllable, is to look at it in the context of a sentence. That's what trope does. It would tell us which syllable was important to understand the meaning of that word. So now, let's get back to the shalshalit. The shalshalit, the word shalshalit means chain because it's a chain of notes, of singing. And the presence of a shalshalit in the Torah denotes anxiety, hesitation, ambivalence. So let's look at the instances of the shalshalit in Breshit, in the first book of the Torah. It first appears in Vayera, Chapter 19, verse 16. Vayit mama The word vayit mama means he lingered. Lot has to leave Stom. He's been told by the angels he has to leave because the city is going to be destroyed. And he lingers. Rashi tells us that he lingered because he didn't want to leave all of his possessions. And the reason Rashi can make this interpretation is simply because of the presence of the shashelet on the word he lingered. Clearly, he didn't just linger. He hesitated. He was ambivalent. He wasn't sure he wanted to leave all his stuff behind. The next instance of the shashelet is in Chaye Sarah, chapter 24, verse 12. Vayoma which means, and he said. Eliezer, the servant of Abraham, has been sent on a mission to find a wife for Isaac. And along the way he prays to God, and the verse begins, and he said to God, send me good speed this day and show kindness to my master Abraham. Now the Midrash tells us that Eliezer was hoping that the woman he found would not want to come back and marry Isaac, so that Eliezer could marry off his own daughter to Isaac and keep his family secure with Abraham's fortune. The only reason the Midrash could make this leap simply from the word and he said is because of the presence of the Shalshelet on the word Vayomar. So clearly Eliezer was ambivalent. He was not happy about the job that he was sent off to do. He was not sure that he really wanted to do it. And the third instance of the Shalshelet in Breshit is in this week's portion, Vayeshev, chapter 39, verse 8. Vayma'en. He refused. 
So Joseph has survived the pit episode. He's been brought down to Egypt. He's comfortably ensconced in the Potiphar household, and Mrs. Potiphar is making advances to him. We're told that Joseph is a very handsome young man, and clearly he's done very well for himself since he was in that pit. And it's obvious that Mrs. Potiphar would be very happy to have his sandals under her bed. And he refused. But we understand that to mean he really wavered. He thought about it. Should he? Shouldn't he? Should he say yes? Should he say no? And the reason we can understand that as he wavered in his decision is because of the shalshelet over the word he refused. Every instance of a shalshelet in the Torah is critical to our understanding of the subtleties of what's really going on with the characters. If we only read the plain meaning of those words, we would not at all understand what really is going on in the story. Even though the Shalshalit is an infrequent visitor in the Torah, unfortunately I think it's a rather frequent visitor in our own lives because we all have Shalshalit moments. We all have moments when we waver between doing what we should do and doing what we want to do. Those moments when fear, anxiety, or doubt can cloud our judgment. And so it's my hope that as we sing the trope of our lives, as we sing the song of our lives, that we think in these difficult moments, in shalshalit moments, we use those as opportunities to help us learn and to grow. Shabbat Shalom. Mm -hmm.